Hey guys, what's up? Mad Season here, and I'm finally back with another episode of Time Warp. This is a series where I go over features or things that used to be in the game, but were removed or changed for one reason or another. For this one, I wanted to cover the old Paladin and Warlock mount quest chains that were removed in the Cataclysm. That's right, yet another thing that was removed with that expansion. It definitely gave me a lot of material for this series, that's for sure. Now, there are of course two different mounts for both of these classes. Originally, it was the level 40 versions and the level 60 beefed up versions. For the level 40 ones, you just did a quick turning quest to learn how to summon the mount. For Warlocks, it was the Felsteed, which you learned from an NPC in Ratchet. And for Paladins, it was the Warhorse, which you got from an NPC in Stormwind. And from these quests, you also got the Apprentice Riding Skill trained, which allows you to ride 60% speed ground mounts. So, because they were quest rewards, they were free, which was a big deal back then. In the early days, not counting reputation or honor discounts, the level 40 training used to cost 10 gold and the mount 100 gold. And for level 60, it was 100 gold for the training and 1000 for the mount. This was later changed to where the prices were reversed. The training was switched to 100 and 1000, and the mount to 10 and 100. Most people didn't have 100 gold at level 40, or 1100 at 60, and they would have to save up for quite a while. It wasn't uncommon for people to be mountless until the 50s, or seeing level 60s riding the 60% speed mounts for several months. So, just being these two classes gave you a pretty big advantage, and it was actually a pretty controversial thing at the time. You'd have forum posts saying that it's unfair, and that it's preferential treatment, that it's an unacceptable slap in the face, and so on. I never understood that, and that totally had nothing to do with the fact that my first 60 was a paladin. Nothing at all. But, while it was true for the level 40 versions, it actually wasn't entirely true for the level 60 versions. And that's because, as you'll see, the quest lines for the level 60 versions were quite extensive, and they also required expensive items or just straight up gold costs to complete. Far from free, which is what most people thought. Anyways, let's get into it, starting with the Paladin ones, since this is the one I actually did in vanilla. This one gave the awesome Charger mount. It was the same for both races, both humans and dwarves got the same mount. And later, when the Blood Elves were released, they got a red version, which I'll talk about later. It all started from the Paladin class trainer in Stormwind, Lord Grayson Shadowbreaker. The first quest requires you to travel to Ironforge and talk to an NPC called High Priest Rohan and give him 150 of your own gold in exchange for an item called the Exorcism Sensor. Once again, a substantial amount of money back then, and if you completed this part, you were invested in the chain and pretty much had to complete it unless you wanted to essentially waste 150 gold. The next quest sent you to the Terradale area of the Eastern Plaguelands, a high-end level 60 zone, and it required you to exercise 25 spirits there. It was quite lengthy, but soloable. Now that you've proven yourself worthy, your next task was to secure some armor for your mount. You were sent to the blacksmith, Grimand Elmore. Now, if you thought 150 gold was rough, you haven't seen anything yet. This guy wanted not just 150 gold, but 6 Arcanite bars, 10 herbs called Arthas's Tears, 40 Runecloth, and 5 Stratholm Holy Waters. This was when most paladins realized that the rumors of the free level 60 mount weren't really true. So, that's 300 rock gold total so far, and the Arcanite bars in particular were very pricey because they were locked behind a daily alchemy transmute, and they were used in many high-end crafted gears so they were in high demand and therefore expensive. The herbs and Runecloth weren't too bad, and the holy water you got from little crates in the Stratholm dungeon. So, this was the first part that required a full party to complete, and everyone competed for these crates, so you had to let your party know that you needed 5 holy waters for the quest, or you might come out empty. So, now that you have the armor, you just need the horse. Shadowbreaker tells you of an ancient equine spirit located in the Diremal instance, another level 60 dungeon, and he also says that you need special feed for it. For the feed, you have to talk to a special NPC in the South Shore zone way up north. She made the feed for you if you gave her 50 gold and 20 enriched mana biscuits. You got these from an Argent Don Quartermaster for about 2 gold and some change. So, that's 350-ish rock gold so far on top of those trade materials. As for the horse spirit, as I said, you needed to head into the Dire Mall instance, so once again, another 5-man escapade. Now, this did require a key to get in, but I need a break from talking about those, so I'll just let you use your imagination there. You needed to kill the Tendris Warpwood boss in Diremal West. He was the first boss, so it wasn't too bad, but Diremal was a giant maze if I remember correctly, so it actually was kind of bad. But after killing the boss, you'd notice a horse spirit would spawn. 
Since the quest is now removed, this just mystifies everyone these days. But if you were on the quest, you would have to catch the horse and feed it that special mana feed you got earlier. It allows you to place the barding upon its back, and it's blessed by the spirit. But you're not done yet. The sensor you were using earlier must be converted into a scryer to be used in the cleansing ritual later. And to convert it into a scryer, you gotta pay up. It required an Azerothian diamond and a pristine black diamond. You got the Azerothian diamond from Thorium Veins, fairly expensive but not too bad, but the pristine black diamond was another story. This was a very rare drop from elite dungeon enemies, the Blackrock Depths, Spire, Strathholm, etc. It was very expensive as I recall, hundreds of gold. So at this point, you were pretty much nearing the cost of 1000 gold that everyone had to pay anyways, unless you farmed all of this yourself which was possible, but very tough. But now that you have the scryer, there's just one more step. You needed to head into the basement of the Skolomance dungeon where Rattlegore was located and use the scryer. When you did so, it summoned waves and waves of undead enemies and then finally a special death knight boss named Dark Reaver. He used to be a paladin, but was seduced by the call of the Lich King into becoming a death knight. He imprisoned a once noble charger and is currently using it as his undead steed much like Baron Rivendare. You had to defeat Dark Reaver and loot the charger's lost soul and then use it to finally free its spirit. And that was it. With that, you finally obtained the charger mount in all of its glory. I remember when I finally got it, I did a few laps around Ironforge in celebration. It was an epic experience, much like the Warlock's Dreadsteed, so let's get into that. Now, I didn't do this one personally, so forgive me if I get some of the minor details wrong. I did help some friends get it, but I didn't have a Warlock back then, so just give me a little leeway here, and feel free to post any corrections if you have any. So, the quest for this one started from class trainers and brought you to an NPC named Morzul Bloodbringer in the Burning Steps. He was located at the Altar of Storms, a very interesting place that holds statues that you may have seen before. And you had to do, well, warlocky stuff to get it. Blood, demons, summoning reagents, things of that nature. The first quest required you to get 30 Raging Beasts blood. For this, you needed to go all the way to Winterspring to kill some Owl Beasts. Remember, this is vanilla, and the traveling for some of these quests was legendary. After completing that, you needed a special reagent called Zerathian Stardust to open a portal to another realm to summon the mount. The only problem is that this is only held by a certain dreadlord located in Felwood, so Bloodbringer sends you to a servant, Gorziki Wild Eyes. For the next quest, you had to buy something called a shadowy potion from him. This made you friendly with the demons of Jadenar located in Felwood, and they cost 6 gold each, so you wanted to avoid messing up. You needed to use this potion, and then travel all the way through the Gauntlet of Demons to a Dreadlord named Lord Banehollow. He tells you to go kill an Orc Warlock named Ulithic, and as a reward, he allows you to buy the Stardust from a servant. It was 150 gold, and he had to make sure that you had that on hand before he started all of this, or else you'd have to pay for extra shadowy potions. After you turn in the dust, a series of material quests become available. In total, you needed 2 elixirs of shadow power, 6 large brilliant shards, 25 dark iron ore, 3 black dragon scales, and 1 arcanite bar. These are used to make some summoning doodads like candles, bells, and other paraphernalia. Hey, no one ever said being a warlock was cheap. Upon completing that, you had a couple more quests to complete. You need to write a parchment that's infused with the stardust you got earlier, but the only place you can do that is the Skolomance dungeon. Wild Eyes gives you an item called the Imp in a Jar, who can create the parchment, so you have to bring it to the alchemy lab within the dungeon so it can make it. After completing that, you need to buy a few more reagents, an item called Jeevy's Jar for 150, and a Black Lodestone and Zerathian Glyphs for 50 each. Not counting the trade materials, that's over 400 rock gold invested into this chain so far. But there was a trick. If you knew a warlock who already had those materials, you could just have him do the summoning for you. So, you could save yourself some gold. Anyways, now that you have all you need to summon your steed, you just need to head to the right location now, which was the west wing of Dyrmal. And once again, you did need a key to get to where you needed to go. There's a boss in there named Imulthar. You have to kill him, and you'll notice a bunch of dyes in the room that were being used to imprison him. This is what we're going to use to summon the dread steed. Once he's dead, you use the jar, and the imp sets up all of the doodads. Waves of demons start coming at you, pretty similar to the paladin finale. The bell, wheel, and candles the imp puts on the ground will need maintenance throughout the encounter and requires recharging by the warlock. 
you needed to use that black lodestone you bought earlier on them, and doing so took a soul shard, so you also had to stock up on those before starting. You do this until nine demonic symbols appear around the boss room. At this point, you use the Zorathian glyphs you got earlier to summon the Dreadsteed, which you have to then fight. Once it reaches 50% health, a dreadlord named Lord Helnerath appears to try and stop you. You may recognize this name as a rare elite enemy on the Broken Shore in the Legion expansion, a cool little callback to this questline. From here, you have to finish off the steed and Helnerath, and if you're successful, you're done. The spirit of the dread steed would then spawn, and if you talked to it, you completed the quest and got the mount. And like I mentioned at this point, you can even summon in other warlocks to talk to the spirit as well so they could get it too, which saved them some gold. So that's it for the original paladin and warlock mount questlines. Really interesting stuff and quite epic back in the day. If you had these mounts, you would turn heads since, like I mentioned, 100% speed mounts were quite rare for a while there in vanilla. They weren't free like most people thought, but they were definitely cheaper. But the quest lines were tough, which is a fair trade-off, I think. As I mentioned though, the Blood Elves also had their own special version called the Thalassian Charger. They were the only race on the Horde side who could be paladins, so Blizzard wanted to mirror the Alliance quest chain. The Night Lord Blood Valor of Silvermood City started this one, and it started off with some material quests right away. He wants you to join a special order called the Blood Knights, and to do that you need to pay tribute. You needed to bring 40 rune cloth, 10 sun grass, 6 arcanite bars, 5 dark runes, and 150 gold. Pretty pricey, but at this time the Burning Crusade was out so gold was a little easier to come by. The next part was a solo quest that required you to kill some scourge in the eastern plaguelands. Nothing too difficult there. But the part after that was a group quest because it required you to go into the elite area, Tyr's Hand. You had to get some holy water from one of the buildings there. It was soloable if you were careful with aggro, but a group definitely helped. And the follow-up required even more materials. This time an Azerothian diamond and pristine black diamond just like the Alliance side, but also a couple of items bought from a vendor. An arcane catalyst for 50 gold, and a crepuscular powder for 150. Bloodwrath prepared this into a mixture for you to use in the Alonzo's Chapel near the entrance to the undead side of Stratholm. You use this mixture to douse the eternal flame located inside of the chapel. The Blood Knights and Paladins are sort of at war with each other, so you did this to sort of prove your superiority to them. The Paladin inside, Aureus, will attack you once you douse the flame, so you had to defeat him. And once you did, five elite Paladins spawned outside and attacked you. If you were able to successfully kill them, you were awarded with not only the Charger, but also a special Blood Knight Tabard. Definitely an interesting mirror to the Alliance side. And that's about it. Those are the old mount quests in a nutshell. They're an interesting piece of the game's history and they were a big deal back then. Remember, this was back when most quests consisted of kill X enemies or pick up Y items, so having these long chains with gauntlet finales was pretty daunting. But that's it for this episode. I hope you found the video interesting or entertaining, like it if you liked it, and I'll see you in the next episode of Time Warp. Thanks for watching. Peace.